This is not advice. I'm not your advisor. We're back for more Reddit personal finance questions. And again, we've got our old friend. At what income slash tax bracket do you switch to traditional 401k slash IRA? Is it generally 22 and up equals traditional, 12 and below equals Roth? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, really what it is, is figuring out what is going to be below average and above average for your lifetime. And there's a lot of people, a lot of people in high income professions, a doctor, an engineer, where the 22 or 24% brackets are going to be kind of the baseline for them. And then they need to figure out, are they likely to be at least that high in retirement or not? There's other questions like, are you in a high tax state and might you not be there forever? So for instance, if you were in the 22% bracket, but you lived in California and it was likely you were going to move and be in the 24% bracket, but be in Washington where there's no state income tax, then you might choose to put money into a traditional IRA or 401k while you're in California, even though you're in a lower federal tax bracket. So there's a lot that goes into it, but generally, yes, if you're at the 12 or below ordinary income bracket, Roth probably makes a lot of sense. It's hard to think that you're going to be below that on average going forward. Whether 22 or 24 is traditional or not, it's a little tricky. I think 22, it might still make sense to put your 401k in traditional, but fund a Roth IRA. Um, but that's starting to get kind of nitpicky. And at that point, it, it's probably going to end up being a wash either way. I have shares in a small company, comma, advice. All right, last year, the company you work for gave you a few shares. You had to stay with them for a year for them to vest, it sounds like. The year's almost up, and you're looking to put in your two weeks notice. Your shares are worth about 10K each. So, like, you have three shares, and they're worth 30K, or uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Upper management has said once your funding comes through the share Shelley's trip, what does that mean? Is this a startup? Is there... Is this a venture funded firm and you're gonna raise another round? You're not trying to stay in touch. You don't even care about making the most possible money. Do you think you'll be able to sell them back as soon as you quit? Yeah, you, you need to do some research and find out uh, what the deals with the shares and there's a good chance they're illiquid and there's gonna be no way to sell them. Um, that's pretty common for small companies. It really depends how it's set up and how it's structured. You might have to keep it. There might be no secondary market for it. There might be no way to get rid of it. They might have something in place. They might say, here's the value that for this whole year, you know, all of 2020, here's what we'll buy them back at. But it sounds like you, you need to do some research to understand the, the value of the shares and how that works. And um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't just do it by ear unless you really don't care about uh about getting anything from these shares. I know you're not supposed to withdraw from an IRA, but I have a decent amount in my 401k and I'm thinking about withdrawing from my IRA just to help with a down payment on a house. You're talking about withdrawing the contributions from a Roth IRA, so there's no tax or penalty. Yeah, you're, you're almost certainly right. <clears throat> you have $200,000 in your 401k you're thinking about taking thirty or 40000 from the Roth to help with the down payment. Yeah, I mean, it really matters what the rest of the, the facts and circumstances here are, but I don't see why it's not a you know, valid reason to take it out. If you had just been saving for it anyway, maybe you wouldn't have made those contributions. The real downside is it's kind of hard to get dollars into Roth. Uh, although most 401k plans now let you do it if you want. Maybe you're not in a place anymore where it makes sense. 
probably worth looking into borrowing against your 401k. Maybe you're already thinking about doing that. Uh, and this is in addition. Usually, if you have 100,000 in your 401k, you can borrow 50. Um, that's pretty normal. If you're going to leave your job, it all becomes due. So, so you have to be careful with that. But worth thinking about. Probably a better first option than taking the the distribution from the Roth. But I mean, it seems okay. Uh, not really enough facts to know for sure if you should be looking somewhere else for the money first. But yeah, it's a house. That's what you want to do. Seems like a reasonable way to get it. Sounds like you're already pretty well on track for retirement.